good morning. It is just about nine o'clock on this Wednesday, May 29th, and I am delighted to be with you this morning. My name is Norma Malfatti. I am the director for Evangelical Mission for the Upstate New York Synod and one of the assistants to the bishop. And it's my delight to be with all of you this morning. Oh, good morning, Jackie. It's good to see your name this morning, even when we can't see faces. Oh, and I am outside this morning. Um, so you'll notice lots of different sounds that will happen. Good morning, Roger. They are um, at my apartment complex. They are um, mowing the grass this morning, but I think they're far enough away that it shouldn't interrupt us. So when I was growing up, my grandparents lived with us. We had kind of a mother-daughter um, house. And, um, and so my grandmother and grandfather um, always were with us. And one of the things that I remember most about my grandmother is her relationship with animals. She used to get frustrated when our cats would go into her apartment. And, um, and so she even had a sign on the door that said, keep your cats out of my house. Um, there might have been um, a four-letter word that starts with a D um, on that sign um, that speaks to how deeply she didn't want the cats in her apartment. Um, ironically, later on, she would then create beds in her bedroom so that the cats would have a place to sleep there. Um, so it was a little bit of a love-hate relationship. And, um, and one of the other pieces is how much she loved to feed birds. And, um, and as she fed the birds, she always struggled with squirrels and how the squirrels wanted to eat the bird seed. And um, she had this special um, bird house that if the squirrels would get on it, the weight would go down and they couldn't get to the food as well as she had an empty soda can that she put three rocks in it. And so if she would be sitting at, at the window and watching the birds um, and a squirrel would come, she would open the door and she would shake that can to tell the squirrels to go away so that the birds could have their bird feeder. So it's with all of that in my background um, that I saw a video that a fellow DEM posted yesterday. Um, when this is over, I'll post the um, I'll post the video in the comments, um, and um, it is the story it, of a man um, somewhere in the United States in this season of stay at home who wanted to get into birding, and he too bought um, a special bird feeder so that the squirrels would stay out, and. Um, and then he would sit and watch and he would have his binoculars and he would sit at the window and just watch the birds wanting to start to get into that experience. And, um, and what he noticed was surprising. He watched birds. Ooh, a shaker can, Ruth, um, for dogs. Um, and so he would watch the, um, he would watch at his window. And what he noticed is that squirrels are persistent and smart and they learn. And so he went on a quest to find the ultimate um, bird feeder that would stop squirrels. And day after day, what he noticed is that after a day or so, the squirrels would figure out how to overcome the, um, the mechanisms that were created in order to stop the squirrels. He watched squirrels just pick lids up off the top of bird feeders. He watched squirrels take a bird feeder off completely from its hook and tipped onto the ground so that they could have their fill. Um, and so then he went on an adventure of building 
this bird feeder that was absolutely squirrel proof. And he created an obstacle course. And, um, and I'll let the rest to you to figure out what's going on. But what I found most fascinating about this 21 minute video, so I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole, was listening to how his relationship to the squirrels changed. The more he just sat and watched and noticed, the more that he started to develop um, positive feelings and a different relationship with the squirrels. And I was reminded of the very beginning of Genesis, you know, when God created everything, right? God created light and dark and separated them and called them good. God created the stars. God separated the waters from the waters and created land and called it good. God created all the vegetation and the plants and God called it good. God created all the things that swim in the ocean and God called them good. God created every living beast and animal that crawls on the ground and called it good. God created human beings and called them good. And so when we think about creation, as much as we might get irritated by that pesky mosquito, God created them. And God does call God's creation good, even if they might be irritating to humans. And so I was thinking about how this gentleman started to see the good in the squirrels, started to see their resilience, their perseverance, their intellect, their partnership, uh, right? There's two squirrels that are always together. And he noticed what he laughingly called Fat Gus, P-H-A-T, because it was a squirrel that was pretty fat. He figured out along the way that it should actually be fantastic, Gus, because it was a pregnant squirrel. Um, so, what happens when we stop and we notice and we start putting, and we stop putting judgment on the things that we usually judge, when we stop making assumptions about things and just stop and pause and look and watch? It works for so much more than um, just quarantine distraction by developing relationship with squirrels. But it works in all of our lives that rather than bringing our assumptions to things, rather than automatically judging things, even when we've had a bad experience before, and instead started to wonder where is God providing the good in that? Where is the beauty of God's creation in that? Because when God created, God called them good. God didn't just call the human beings good. God just didn't sit down on day six after the humans and say, this is now the pinnacle of my creation. But every day when God rested, God sat satisfied looking at the beauty and wonder of what was created that day. And so now that we can start to be outside a little bit more here in upstate New York, I don't know about you, but it was like 97 degrees yesterday. And so maybe we noticed um, the gift of sunshine and warmth and the gift of not turning on your lights and being in a cool room. Um, after coming inside, but what might you be able to sit and notice as you sit in your backyard, look out your window, maybe even go for a walk in the woods? Where might you develop a new relationship to the creation around you? Where might you see new things? in the world around you. 
I was with um, a group of pastors yesterday and one of them was sharing that how as a young woman um, she just sat down one day and just sit, sat to watch a flower bloom sitting with that and um, I was talking with uh, Karen Eden who has beautiful flowers in her yard um, and I know that because she brought me some um, some tulips uh, but as um, she talked about watching them and how they bloom and close, right? And the ways in which the sun moves. And so I commend to you this week as um, we continue to enjoy these first pieces of summer um, since we seem to have skipped spring here in upstate New York. What might you notice? What might you see? Where might you literally take time to stop and smell the roses? You might notice something beautiful and good that you never noticed before. And so I wish and bless for you this day, one that is filled with joy and wonder and discovering new things. Amen.